again to round it all up for Vega. But um, the one problem I do see with Ninjas in Pajamas lineup is it's very good, it's very strong in team fights. But A, they're not very mobile. Like, Bristleback's not very mobile. Chen, he's definitely more mobile than he used to be. Like, don't get me wrong. Right. But Warlock is also not mobile. That's the one thing I fear. But Vega didn't really punish that, I don't think. They don't have very good split pushers. They have some team fight of their own. But I'm, I'm worried that if they get their, uh, their core items, like Mech and, you know, whatever Bristleback wants, I, I think that their team fight's going to be quite strong. I feel like if, yeah, it's really about snowballing at this point. Vegas Squadron don't necessarily need to snowball. I mean, they have one. They have an ability called snowball. <laughs> but NIP, if they actually get the snowball going, Bristleback could become a force to be reckoned with. They have their last pick coming out, the Phoenix pick from Vegas Squadron. You talk about team fight. That's just another thing to add. Nine Plus plays Phoenix in the off lane. Magnus bid for no one. Tusk played probably by RZ. Vengeful probably played by Sima, and then Troll played probably played by Tron. So that should be the lineup for Vega anyway. Okay. And actually, Moppack says that uh, Bristol has a 47% win rate and 6.83 with 40% at TAC. So, okay, it's a little bit lower than I thought it was, but uh, I guess it just depends, obviously, on from lineup to lineup. Last pick up here coming for <coughs> Nip, and I believe this is going to be, an, okay, it's an off lane, I guess, puck for Jonas. Jonas? The Jonas and fan. Jonas and fan. I, I guess I it know. could be, okay, no, yeah, it's going to be Eric playing the Bristol pack. Yeah, and this is interesting. Era generally plays the hard farming heroes, but this game he's gonna be playing the bristle back and the Onus fan's really the one that, that thrive, I feel like, on these really aggression heroes, but they're gonna give him the puck instead. Um and this is one of the few games where Yonis fan might be alone. Um usually they pair him up with a lot of heroes and Era sometimes gets to be solo or gets to be mid, but it is gonna be Yonis fan probably either in the off lane. Yeah, it's off lane era or Yonis fan because eight mothers mid, so Okay. And uh, what do we got going on here? Do they get just using some format aggression to their own jungle? Yeah, maybe try to spot people out. Um, Posh is placing a ward here, and he's actually gonna. Ooh, interesting. Although I'm pretty sure they noticed that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a nice idea, but uh, <laughs> it makes Posh it kind of like obvious. I'm gonna send you ward. This guy's don't even worry about it. Yeah, maybe he's just <clears throat> debating exactly where he placed it, but. Um, where do you put the sentry if you want to try to ward without like losing any of the camps? Just like right there. Okay. Like right, right in the middle. It's kind of a, oh, an awkward spot, but uh, you can also okay. place it over here. Cause like if you're countering um, that ward there anyway, that's the traditional spot. The, the problem is he doesn't 100% know where it is. I'm, I'm wondering why he's not countering it right now, actually. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they saw him place they it. They saw the tree, like the trees are gone. Like, why would he just do that randomly without placing the ward? And maybe throw him off? I don't know. Oh, he did it again. He Icarus dived. He, he, he mistimed it, actually. Not possibly. There was a good effort, but... The, the, the rune actually feels like it comes out a bit later than it should sometimes. I don't know yeah. if that's just me. Yeah, it's no, really I agree weird. with that. You, like, look at the clock, or you hear the horn, and then it just doesn't come out for, like, another, like, five seconds. I guess that's just the, the disconnect between the clock and, and the horn. I don't know, man. It bothers well, are me. There, now I feel stupid. Are there two zero seconds? Like, does it count down three, two, one, zero, zero? Or does it go zero? Like, yeah, I don't know, dude. That's, is there, maybe that's there's a like good... a slight pause or something. I don't know. We've got to get know chat on that. Somebody go into a lobby and test that shit. Because, listen, oh, no, we're, no, we're not going to be able to figure it out. I mean, we're <laughs> just going to be called the, the dumbest people in the world. I mean, if we go to a game number three, <laughs> we'll definitely test it. But, like... I'll, I'll keep my eye on the clock, but yeah, I don't know. Somebody or just people are in chat are like this. That's not how clocks work, you idiots, or something. This. All right. Well, it's not the biggest deal because uh, it's a dual lane, and primarily a dual lane against an off lane rather than a tri lane against an off lane. You want to harass and zone out more. When it's a tri lane, you don't want to use all your resources to just harass. You only need one hero most of the time. And the other hero can pull, but since it's only two heroes, he's going to be focusing mostly on the lane. But Posh is already level two, and I mean, uh, he's having a good time. Yeah, he's doing well for himself. He's actually going to be level three here soon. Yeah, this is. I mean, he might not be getting CS, but he doesn't really give a shit about that. At some point, he'll have tranquil boots, and that's more than he needs. You notice the fan is caught between a rock and a hard place. He's to jump across the river, across the ravine to stay alive. Um, they could have gotten a kill there, but actually, we have terrible skill early on, so they have no real disable other than snowball, which isn't great. Jeez, Warlock's attack animation and damage is pretty strong. So solo offlane Bristol is got the highest win rate actually. Duo safe lane has the lowest by far. Three wins and ten losses. That's insane. 
So what you're saying, don't put Prisvek in a safe lane with another hero. Like, just that's, don't do that. That's what the stats would suggest. Oh god, it's unfortunate. Well, uh, it currently is a dual safe lane, so it's a good chance based on how the stats go, and this game could get out of control quickly. And we'll find out. <laughs> You know, I bet so the, it's gonna walk through. I bet a big reason for that is that Bristleback utilizes ancient stacking very, very well, and you do that best. Uh, game is yeah, game is pretty much over. We can just call this and that's done. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, level three up for the Phoenix, and uh, you know, only having one CS. But yeah, you did mention he's getting pretty good levels compared to Puck, who's still sitting at level one. Doesn't have phase shift, so they can be pretty aggressive to him. Yeah, and, this is the yeah. problem. Uh. Icarus Dive coming out, and Posh is, he's gonna TP, he's gonna go home. I mean, that, that's the issue. I mean, there, there's no way they could kill him. Like, he could just Icarus Dive somewhere, and then TP out. Like, he could wait for the cask. If they start using Viscous Steels, we could even just jump out earlier. So it's like, there's not much you could do here for for NIP to get the kill. But they're, they're fine, as long as they're getting CS for the Bristleback, which they, they are. Mid's going pretty well. Hate Mother is winning the lane, which, I mean, last game he got trounced by no one, but this is a matchup that will definitely favor him. The right click animation is a lot better for Hate Mother. Um, he can harass no one a lot more effectively than eight, uh, than no one can harass Hate Mother. Top lane? Uh, you notice if had actually jaunted away, but started taking some harass off to salve up. Yep. So far, nothing really happening here. He stole level one, though, and I don't think he's going to get any more experience in this when he walks up here now. He's got no ja or he's got no mana for his orb, so that means he has to play extra safe. There is a ward scouting out, but, uh, I mean, it's just showing him that the supports are oh, here. Oh, Hanskin was in perfect position to cut off the retreat path of Vicarious Dive, 9 Posh. That was really good, and that's first blood going out for your chin. So, nice. they cast him here. And then he Icarus dived. He had two options going here or here. And he took the second option, and Hanska was waiting here. Maybe just waiting for the four minute room, but still was really nice either way. Picks up an illusion. It makes him farm a little bit faster in the jungle. He's got some stacks to work with for himself, too. And he's going to be level five, and that's, that means three creeps, too. Snowball goes. Eight Mother's still in trouble. Shockwave, they did one more or two more right clicks, maybe. It's going to be two, and no one will not be able to get this kill. Shadow Word actually. It's impossible to kill Eight Mother. I think he's got stats too. Yeah, it's definitely impossible to kill this guy. They tried going at him with the ice shards. It's just, it's not doable. Yep, and Magnus is just going to walk back to base. Uh, Tuscar is going to get a little bit of extra experience, but he actually has no mana and HP too, so they're both going to have to walk back to base, unfortunately for them. The Chan is farming very, very well. Like I said, he's going to be level 5 at maybe even under 5 minutes if he gets this camp fast enough, which is very, very good timing for him. Yeah, he's gonna have it, I think. Uh, six seconds. Yes. 457 for your level 5 top lane. Jonas and Fan getting right clicked, but they really just can't get this kill. Uh, again, they're zoning about very effectively. Now the creep wave's pretty much close to his tower, and finally Jonas and Fan gets level 2. Icarus, or rather, the Phoenix is level 4. So that's, the, that's the difference. And, I mean, all things quiet. The good thing for NIP for this second game, they have three CSers in the top four. Obviously, they have the Chen and the Bristol in the safe lane, and eight other is crushing mid. Or doing pretty well mid. I don't know if he's crushing it, but. I think actually Magnus is doing much better than we would expect. He has only three CS under that of the Warlocks, and he was under some aggression from the Wildkin, too. Here comes a snowball in mid. It's very slow, though. And they're going to pop the Warlock all off the TPN from Sealkin. And by the way, Chen's wrapping around to the backside. No one is in trouble. Sensor Conqueror stomp number one. Sensor Conqueror stomp number two. They also have the Dark Troll and Snare. Not going to go just yet. Waiting for it. They use it on Arzik. They get the kill with the Test of Faith. Arzik might be able to get away. Illusory Orb. They pick up the rune. Snowball comes in. Yonis and Van getting kind of low. It'll hit up, but they don't really have the damage to work with here. RZ getting chased down. They probably don't get this kill. Yeah, he's going to make it out, but... It was a good effort, and really, just honestly, really good rotation from an IP, so. Look at this death push, too. They got creeps, they got the golem. They want to defend this, though. They have, okay, they have some decent deep push, actually. Yeah, there you go. Now, that might have even stifled the push. We'll see if another shockwave can scare them off. Yeah, it will, actually. Send, uh, I guess, you know, just fan back home, and... He had his loser our ball before he goes home. Bottom lane, though, 
Uh, 35 lashes for Eric, going for a Vanguard again. And this time it's Eric picking it up. Nine Poshes sitting at five last hits, level five. That's more important than anything else. And Troll's just been sitting top, farming. 45 last hits, has a Morbid Mask, has a Sage's Mask. Oh, mid. And Snowball goes on to Eight Mother. This time they might actually be able to get the kill. Skewer back, RP not there. Shadow Earth, he's so tanky. The three levels of stats, even two levels of stats. Two sent our Conqueror stops again, and no one gets stun locked into place. And Eight Mother is just laughing all the way to the bank, man. They can't kill him, and they've tried multiple times. Yep. And uh, Hanskin just always is in the right place at the right time. Like, he was in the, in the area. If he's not, I'm pretty sure Han Eight Mother dies. Also, the Skewer was... Uh, I want to say that was a good 400 range shorter than he, it could have been. I think he actually could have skewered him over the cliff or, or even a bit further. And I wonder if that would have been given that would have given him the extra bit of time before Hanskin could have gotten to range. Hanskin, by the way, level six, almost level seven for Chen. He's got Hand of God ready to go. And the heels, we haven't even seen the heels and come into play in like a real team fight. And and that's the thing I fear here for Vega. That what we saw at the draft. Like these heels are going to be huge. This game already feels like it's starting to slip away from Vega here. I mean, Tron is doing well, but they're they're down 1,500 in net worth. Air is farming super well. He has his Vanguard already. He's going Treads next, I imagine. I don't think that's a Midas. Could be Midas. Um, we'll we'll see. see. Yeah. But. The thing is, is like usually if you buy Treads, you want the belt of strength more because it's just better. <laughs> 15 attack speed just with no, no other stat is pretty bad. Might have seems somewhat likely. Cast is going to go through. It's going to bounce both or twice. Sentra Conqueror top misses on his team. And the second one might go, but there's the snowball. The Supernova going on the backside. And actually, Seal could having to back away, but here comes Era to help out. Supernova does some work, pushes them back, but the Buddha Restoration. Seal Kid's pretty much back to full health. Ours is cast TP away. Luckily, he will make it out. There's no uh, stun for Seal Kid. So oh, he just Sima. got the cask. Uh, Sima is going to try to TP out. Uh, okay, you're not making it, but it's a good effort. Center Conqueror Stomp, and goodbye. Hanskin is dominating. He gets his mech. Or Buckler, rather. I think that's just, just his Buckler. And, uh, he's he's pretty close to mech, though. That's the problem. And Jonas Ved gets... Oh, my God. Magnus goes down as well. And what happened last game with Vega dominating, now NIP are the ones that have the ownage call. Yep. Well, they have the troll. <laughs> And uh, we've seen this hero go pretty ham quickly. He's actually pressuring the top tower by himself, which is good because they still have all their towers. And that's the important thing, I think, for Vega. That they, they have the map control still. They have all their towers. They have actually decent D-push, too. Like, Ice Shards is decent damage. It's very long range. Shockwave is, is obviously good, too. Eventual Spirit's going to be maxing the Wave of Terror, I presume. So their D-push is actually there. Uh-oh. Uh, Phoenix, no, you're he dead. does get the kill. Yeah, he he got he got Seema. That's nice, or rather Seal Kid, but I think it was Seal Kid. Yeah, and but it's he still goes down in the end. Um, Icarus Dive tried to TP away, so TP wasted. Uh, Supernova was on cooldown, obviously. He's going to be going for Midas, unsurprisingly, as we often see on Phoenixes. So, but yeah, no, they, I mean Vegas certainly have a way to get back in this game. However, it just feels like. And IP are getting a little bit more out of the map. Other than a lot of CS going for Tron. Like, Tron has the most CS by far in this game. And he has, like, three different items that he's going for. He will have his Aquila. He also picks up a Blade of Lacrity. So probably going for the Guy's SMY. Hanskin is the sixth most farm chan at, ever at 10 minutes. And the fastest of 6.83. Hmm. That's impressive. Guy's yep, he's got a ton of farm. Oh, here comes uh, the Phoenix. He's dead, and Nine Posh is in trouble. He's gonna get his Supernova off just barely. Now the Snowball going in as well. They're gonna hit the Sewer. RP onto two. This might be the fight they're looking for. Era with the Quill Sprays. They're almost all dead. Tron and RZ going to be in trouble. They're actually gonna go down. A loser is gonna come through. John, and they get the double kill with the Otis and Fanny. Comes in, Waiting Rift goes. Era also helps out with Quill Sprays, and I thought that fight was gonna be good for Vega, but Era is just doing too much damage now. Warpath, the Quill Spray is going to work. No one's gonna fall pretty soon. Four dead for Vega. Now they're getting over run. They're already at the tier 2 tower, and this fight is definitely going the way of the Swedes. Seam is getting caught out. The jaunt coming through. Yonis fans actually stuck in the trees, um, and he will be stuck there for some time. He might fall. They might have to leave him there. Face shifts the fire spirits. Doesn't matter. He's dead. Hand of God. Uh, I don't know if he needed that. That, that was, was a waste, but yeah, that's oh a well. Waste. Oh well, because... Jeez, that, that that was scary. Like that's that's what I was talking about. And he did he, he did go for treads, by the way. So no Midas, no greedy Midas here for Era. 
and geez, uh, it's it's really hard. I at this point now, I don't think they have the damage because Mech is just bought. They didn't even have that for that fight. More items going to be coming out for Era. He was, seems unkillable. They didn't even use the Golem that fight. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like that that RP was like as good as it's going to get, and and he just pops off the quill sprays, and like they got to like four stacks of it, and like oh, I guess we're dead now, and they just all died. Jonas and Fab came in, he got a couple of kills. He still isn't anywhere near his blink dagger, but I don't think he gives a damn at this point. His team is doing so well, so... Mm -hmm. Again, there there is a chance that Vega could get back into this, but this this Magnus seems useless. Uh, Troll needs to get a lot more farming. He already is up to his Yasha, pretty much, but... He needs a bit more, so... Yeah, I, after watching Phoenix a lot more, like... Like I said, I'm a pretty big Phoenix noob. I don't know the hero that well, but... It seems to be that... This ult just sucks until it hits level 11. Like, I, or I should say level 2. I just see it I, I just see it die way too fast with only 5 auto attacks. So I feel like this here really... Maybe that's why people build Midas. I don't know. He's going to have yeah. it by the time he's level 11 anyway, though. So I don't know. Yeah, but, but level 16 is pretty good as well. It's like the, the same reason that you get one on, on the Wraith King. You notice a fan getting mm -hmm. RP'd up. No one will skewer him back. But uh, he's just going to lose your and Well, Jaunt, Ice Shards are going to go. That'll actually connect. And he might get the kill. Snowball's going to go. And... Waning Rift, but he's dead anyways. It takes a lot just to get an off -head Puck who's actually so underleveled. I mean, it is tough at this point. They're really scraping at the bottom of the barrel here for Vega. Yep. Push coming mid, too. Midas being flown out for the Warlock as well. Kind of late, but it's still there. Still good. And their arrow with the heals. Double heals. Man, that's just going to be so scary. Like I said, they have a decent D push, but there's just so much more gold on the side of Nip right now. They have anything, everything they could possibly want at this point. A mech. Era's got like a Vanguard. He's gonna have a freaking Sanj pretty soon, or whatever. Yeah, Sanj. And who knows what he's building? Albert maybe is pretty good against Troll. Albert um, is quite good, yeah. And they'll they'll head into Rose too. They don't have the armor reduction like they did last game. They do have uh, Era with the viscous diesel goo, so that's something. That that allows Roche to be taken out pretty quickly. Well, it'll be like 4 armor reduction or something. And uh, with Warpath as well, your damage is pretty high. So yeah, this should be a very fast Roche. You can see that on the backside of Stein Posh. He might know this is happening, but I don't think he's going to give a damn. And they'll take Roche on. And with this, they just need a couple more towers to get up to the high ground here. And, and Vega are not, they're not conceding yet, but they're in a pretty rough position. There it goes. Arrow pick up the Aegis. They're gonna counter ward as well. That ward just got plays. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, Poshi's running around. He's got Icarus die if he... yeah, I think he's gonna die here though. Oh. I can't even see the hero, but I think he's TPing out. He's, yep, he's, he's out. Sun Ray <laughs> and TPing. Wow. That's actually such a cheeky play. He got Dream Coil there. He was Sun Ray and he walks because Sun Ray m makes you move. He sunrayed and like moved up to the high ground, or I, I don't know whatever <laughs> that is, the cliff, the the place that you shouldn't be on to go to map. Tron will pop battle chance. They'll take it to one tower. TPU's the golem's gonna come in, but where's the follow up? Air comes through as well. Snowball as well coming in. Magic missile. They can't really chase anymore. Seal kid's gonna maybe get. Yeah, they'll kill RZ, but they only get one kill. Bottom lane is getting pushed and. I mean, RP's gonna go, it'll be in the Han skin. Just a solo RP shockwave. Hand of God's gonna go. He's already used his mech, I believe. Sets our Conqueror Stomp. Yoda's fan's gonna fight this, but here comes the Supernova. He jumped in at maybe the wrong time. The Supernova dishing out a lot of damage. Tron might turn to range. Battle Treads is gonna go. They'll phase shift, avoid the shockwave, but dies anyways. The sun rate kinda goes wonky. Now they're coming bottom. No RP. Tron's gonna get caught out. Cask's gonna go. They're trying to fight him. Shadow Wave, he's dead. Now the Dream Crawl, or rather the Death Ward going in, and seeing the star has to back up. No one is going to get obliterated as well, coming out from the, uh... Well, there's just a lot of damage, honestly. Cool sprays, right click. The Amulation from the Warlock Golem. And, uh, they're going to get the Tier 2 Tower. So they get a couple mid, they lose a couple bottom, they get a, a Hero bottom, and they get the Tier 2, so... And this draft is pretty good against Troll, too. Like, Troll's not the best at 5v5 engagements. He likes to pick heroes off in the... Uh, like before a fight happens with maybe a Shadow Blade or Blink, just ha have fast movement speed, bash someone down when it's not very tanky and go to the next target, the next target, but straight 5v5 with all these heals, Troll is actually suffering and can't really find the openings where it, in other lineups that he could.
Magnus, they, are, they do have the RP and they have the ability to take out some heroes, but it's just not enough at this point. They do have level 11 on, on Phoenix, which I do think is a big deal from what I've seen. So if they get a good supernova, then it's not all out of the question, but... Uh, the gold, the graphs do indicate, actually experience is not that high, and this usually happens in push lineups. Usually when you're constantly grouping up, you lose out in the experience. So it's only about 3,000, like 3,500 experience, and then mm -hmm. gold is about 7,000. I mean, it's not, it doesn't seem like they're as far ahead as they should be right now. Whereas yeah. the game, last game, Vega had this huge lead at this point period in time like they, they were decimating an IP and a lot of that like you mentioned comes to a push lineup number one and number two like I mean you still have a lot of farm for Tron at this point in the game like he, he is very farmed but again he's not very good in in this situation where you have to deal with the pushes and you're absolutely right about that it's good for getting pickoffs and that's just not happening currently so and IP will head top they have two heroes in the vicinity they're gonna jump in with the Jonas fan who has blink now by the way Tron silenced eight mothers thinking about running and then runs in a bit too late now gets rolling axe they're gonna shadow word himself um, and everyone's congregating top to maybe have something happen here ice shards go Jonas fan walks in casually winning rift they get the golem off the dream cool goes they already break one the snowball is going to break as well, but that breaks while they're in the snowball. Now Death Ward RP comes, oh, misses. No. no one misses the RP, but it might not matter. They've already <laughs> taken down 8 Mother. Supernova's going to go as well. Tron is going to get a kill on 8 Mother. Air is going to walk in as well. And now Yoda's fan jumping in. RZ might die. Tron's going to try to DP away, and he will make it out. But what else is happening here? Double kill for 8 Mother. The Warlock Golem trying to obliterate. They get both supports. Nine Posh is going to literally go into the trees. Quill Spray's going. Blink. They see him. He's in the trees. They ping him out. I don't know. This is really weird. He doesn't have TP for like 28 seconds. This is awkward. Air's actually just cool spring him to death. <laughs> oh, they don't know. Oh, oh no. They, they were not right him? next to each other and he blinked to full. Why? Oh, no. They could have just stayed there. Oh, they, no. They thought he did Icarus die. What a disaster. He look at him go. Look out. at him. <laughs> dude, what the, f <laughs> what the hell, dude? Like, that's actually just so dumb. Oh, All right, Valve. Yeah, that, that Magnus, I've seen some better Magnus plays. Not only did he completely whiff, like it wasn't even close, completely whiff the RP, but he totally whiffed the skewer too, so none of his spells landed. And I actually think that could have been a huge fight for them had those spells landed on some decent targets. Because yeah. they were sort of winning the fight at the beginning, but then because they expended so much, Nip knew that they could still fight, because they had all their spells up. The H does go down, so that's good for them at least. But they don't have Supernova for 23. They don't have RP for 20 as well. I mean, they're out of Outer Towers now. And they're going to find RZ getting dead forded. Which is not bad. I mean, they, that could have been another hero. That could have been Tron dying, who is very close to BKB. Sets are funny sometimes. Warlock's finished by his eggs at 10 to 20 minutes or 9 and 0. 20 to 25 minutes, 2 and 7. And then 25 to 30, 4 and 1. All right, so see that's a stat that means absolutely nothing because it's like you get it super early, you win all the time. You get it like a little bit afterwards, you lose all the time. But if you get it really late, you win all the time. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. It dude. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like that stat, you're right. That's kind of questionable. Match for this one, Team the Slayer. Uh, this season is a good. We still love you, Montax. Don't even worry about it, though. Keep oh yeah, no. I, I, I'm just saying that. I mean, I love stats, but sometimes you got. Well, I should say all the time. You gotta take it with a grain of salt. Like these, like they're like these. Yeah, those are the kind of sets that I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan. I'm just like, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Okay, I, I, just, I love the stats stand, where it's but... like, this hero, um, when he gets a you know Dagon five blink at five minutes has a hundred percent win rate. <laughs> <laughs> like, no well, like a build that you never go is just like okay, all right, yeah. well. That's something to keep in mind. That's because it's usually when they're killing the throne and they're just like buying random shit in the <laughs> in the well, you know. When a Morphling gets an Ethereal Blade at three and a half minutes. <laughs> when like, a Morphling right. buys a Halberd, he is five and oh. It's like, whoa, I didn't know that. I'm going to buy a Halberd now. It's like, guys, <laughs> don't buy Muddy's eggs on Warlock at like 25 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Even Muddy's eggs get upset. <laughs> Muddy's finished their mech at six minutes with a Witch Doctor. I was even a punk on the other team of one and one. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. I, I love this guy. Uh, oh, Good man. Pack. That's that's a great stat right there. Uh, Mod Packs. Good stuff, buddy. <laughs> that's why we pay you the big bucks. Holy. All right. They're smoked up. 
All of a sudden, NIP have a 10,000 net worth lead, 5,000 experience lead, and it just looks like for NIP, all they really have to do is push up to the high ground at this point. Get an age, just push high ground, and, and probably just take the game, because I don't see... I mean, you have to have a big RP. Arzik's going to get slowed up using the upheaval. So slow. What a good ability. Arzik's like, I can't I can't leave. I just can't. The Sunrise is going to go a bit late. They know the snowball's coming in. They're actually like, okay, we'll bring him to us, and then kill him. <laughs> it's just that easy. I actually think the graphic of uh, upheaval looks pretty cool, too. Yeah, I don't know if that's a if that's a cosmetic. That's not how it usually looks. Oh, really? Yeah, that's definitely not how it looks. Okay. Yeah, that, I, that, I, they changed it. it. It's I might be the inscribed Hellborn Grasp, which I think is what it is. His his uh his staff. The, the people regular version. It has the hands that come out of the ground still, but it's not as cool looking. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty awesome. That's it's a very cool ability. And there's some abilities I just get I get lost watching sometimes. Half of them are not in this game though. Um God. I might tell this story. What? <laughs> so I, I this has nothing to do with what we were just talking about. That's but it, okay. it, it reminded me that I, I was playing Dota with so like alright, so one of my friends has played Dota like way back in the day, not like competitively or anything, but like like patch like three points something or something, like four points something, like way back in the day. And so, I was playing with him, and he wanted to get back into Dota. And so we're playing it, and he's like, telling him about all the new spells. And we have another friend that's playing with us, and he's like, he's a lol baby. And I say baby in the most endearing of terms. But he's playing with us, and he's just like, I can't play Dota with my kid without my, like, with, I need my camera lock, dude. I, I, this, I'm moving around the map. I can't, I can't body block. I can't juke. I can't, I can't kite people. And I'm just like, dude, just, just relax, okay? So, eventually what happens is... He disconnects from the game, and we spend at least an hour trying to figure out how camera lock works. And I just, I, I, Wait, like I locked on your hero. Is that what you yeah, mean? Yeah, like in LOL. like, like. Don't it you is just hold LOL. one? Yeah, exactly. That's what I told him. And he's just like, no, it actually moves. Like the edge pan still works. And I'm like, just turn off edge pan then. And I'm like, it's like, but then I can't move the map around. I'm like, Wait, why would he not want to edge? Why would he not want to edge pan? I don't know. LOL people are weird, dude. I don't, I don't ask questions. It just happens. I, who plays that game, anyways? <laughs> it's just like it was the weirdest thing, man. I was like, Paul, can we just play Dota, dude? You've got win rage. Your your team's winning. Like we're playing a bot game, so does it actually matter? You're playing a bot game. All right. Well, I was coaching him on a bot game. My other okay. friend's playing dis or Shadow Demon, and he's like doing like he's doing defensive disruptions like crazy. He's actually getting good demonic purges off. He's popping up shadow poison. This guy's played like four Dota games, and, and this other guy that's played LOL like at a high level is complaining about camera lock, and I'm just like, what the hell? Why, why is this happening? Oh my god, dude. Mortimus didn't stand a chance. I'm a your Shadow Demon friend. Bought Mortimus. <laughs> oh no, the skewer misses again. He really didn't. And the snowball misses too. Everything, every spell Everything misses. is going wrong at this point. See if the Slayer's gonna get caught out. Oh, the Repentance coming in. The upheaval going. The Supernova that is not gonna get attacked at all. Aero doesn't give a damn. He's gonna get Walrus Punch. We'll take absolutely no damage from it. Gets stunned up from the Supernova. He doesn't give a damn again. Magic Lusa goes. He's so tanky. Now they're gonna just blow him up. The RP goes, but only onto the creeps. Try getting right click down. His BKB expended for nothing. Now no one's getting caught as well. And this is probably the end. Skewer up into the trees and actually the Illusion will chase after him. He's stuck in the trees. The Illusion gets the kill. Double kill for Jonas and Fan. Only one surviving. That is the uh, the Phoenix. And See, now, I think this is it. This game I would call. Like especially after that. Like you, they can't land any of their spells against these heroes. Like I said, Puck is. We saw it last game too. Except the other way around. Puck is really good against the Vengeful Spirit. You can never get stunned. He's actually good against the Snowball too. You can never get stunned. Oh Ooh, a nice God. Yules in the middle of the really Icarus good. dive, and they're going to get the kill on Phoenix as a result. Nice job by Jonas and Fan with that freshly purchased Yules. Upheaval doing work, slowing them in the outskirts. Look how cool that looks. Yeah, that was that's a really cool ability. The Assault uh, Crash is finished up for Eric just now. And this is going to be one set of racks, if not two. The Golem is actually hitting. Oh, it expires bottom, but there's just no way to take these team fights at all. For Vega. I mean, the RP is down now for another 40 seconds. They sent somebody back home. Uh, Puck, who didn't jaunt or lose your which is interesting. But no one skewers Era. That's probably the wrong target to skewer back. Uh, Battle Trance goes. They actually leave. They're like, we can't fight this guy. He's going to kill us. Let's back up. And they'll probably just hit bottom because that's where the Onus fans headed, so.
And that's it. I mean, Vega, they, they try to get a pick off at the end there. They try to defend. It just doesn't happen. And like you said, this is one of those games where I th you think about calling at the very least. Uh, but for Vega, they're going to try and defend to the last breath, probably. They send back uh, Seal Kid. He'll regen up. Ags is almost done. He's getting close, but not quite there yet. And now with Roshan and Aegis, there's absolutely no reason for them not to take high ground. But they're going to try to defend this. They're going to try to fight this, it looks like. Well, Supernova's pretty good in the Roche pit, but they are spreading nicely on the side of Nip. You see Jonestown fans down bottom, or t down towards the south side. It's only Era in the pit right now. Here comes a snowball. It's, it's uh, not going to do anything. <laughs> I mean, they're both dead, I think. I, they actually brought Tron. That may have been a mistake. Battle is going to go. Hanskin has his heal. He's going to use it. Next is going to go first. Hand of God's up in a second. Upheaval goes RP only onto Seal Kid. Tron said Era gets the kill. No one skewers back. They call GG, and that that's, yeah. They needed one more fight to, to prove that they were dead, and in fact, it came through, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, Nine Posh gets up a nice supernova, but it does nothing, so. All right, game number two done, and NIP they hold. We're going to move on to game number three. Yeah, it's just an outdraft, I think. Complete outdraft. I liked uh, Nip's draft from the, from the start. Um, 